Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Rob from Heroes Avenue. Happy Friday. Hope you guys had a great week and are ready for Super Bowl weekend. Go Niners. Uh, apologize for not making a video yesterday, guys. Darren has some personal things going on, and I am trying to hold down the fort. But nevertheless, we're going to continue today with some DC News topics that we might have missed throughout the week. The big thing we're going to talk about, of course, is the Black Adam movie. There's a rumor uh, that has uh, been perpetuated by one Grace Randolph. Of course, I know a lot of you guys are not fans of her, but she does get some things right sometimes. So we're going to talk about that big rumor. Uh, first, let's do some uh, let's do some uh, little stories here. And uh, I just want to go ahead and talk about them since they are uh, of interest for this channel, especially for myself. So um, just a little tidbit here. The Flash Rider on what Andy Muschietti brings to the Ezra Miller film. Of course, we just saw Ezra Miller at the... Uh, Arrowverse crossover and that was really cool to see him cross over to, to uh, uh, play Flash against Grant Gustin which was super cool and I just recently did a video about that and what my thoughts were if you want to check that out you can check that out I did it maybe uh, last week at some point but uh, Christina Hodson so the Flash screenwriter Christina Hodson commented on director Andy Muschietti Christina Hodson I believe did the Bumblebee movie as well and I think she wrote Birds of Prey and if you've been following the Birds of Prey coverage that we've been having looks like that movie is really going to deliver who knows until we actually see it and I plan to see it opening night so uh, here's what uh, she had to say I think Andy's fantastic what I loved about it the first one in particular is that he can do scary he can do big genre stuff but he can also do real heart he can give those characters real emotional depth and that's something i would love to see in flash and of course that's something we'd all love to see in all movies right uh but that is very true if you did see the movie it uh in particular the first movie uh andy muschietti was really able to capture what it felt like to uh, have those type of relationships, so those type of friendships, those friendships that you develop as a kid, those endless summers, and the bonds that you can you can develop when you go through in, in you know incredible experiences like they did. Now, in their instance, in that movie, it wasn't really an incredible experience; it was more of a horrific one. And that was what was so cool about that movie too. I didn't think that movie was scary at all, but I did think it was a very well done movie, especially uh, the dynamics with the kids and. Uh, and he did it well and i'm excited for the flash movie we'll be talking a little bit more about the flash in just a second here uh i just wanted to point that out just because christina hodson with her writing the birds of prey movie coming up uh, and her doing the bumblebee movie most recently uh, i thought seeing what she had to say about andy muschietti would be cool so uh, let's jump on to the next little story before we get into the black adam rumors so chris mcquarrie was on twitter now I, i'm on heroic hollywood here this place does a, a pretty good job of summing up a lot of uh news stories but it does also put out a bunch of bs sometimes but nevertheless there is a twitter exchange that kind of revealed some of chris mcquarrie's thoughts about superman and if you guys have been following the channel a while you know that i have been championing a christopher mcquarrie superman film now of course i loved what Zack snyder did Zack snyder's man of steel film is my currently favorite superhero movie of all time right now you guys uh can fight me about it i don't care i love that movie um, but we can't have Zack snyder back apparently because wb i'm not sure if their relationship is still sour but it doesn't look like he's coming back to the dceu so when i saw henry cavill partner up with christopher mcquarrie on the latest mission impossible movie and seeing what he did with that mission impossible franchise with the last two movies i thought he'd be an incredible fit especially since he already has an established relationship with henry cavill and of course these two probably talked behind the scenes at some point about the movie and i think henry cavill and christopher mcquarrie did confirm that they talked about it so uh here's what he had to say and uh, again i've been doing coverage about this and it's really sad that he didn't really get a shot at this. So someone uh, someone tweeted at him and said, sure would love a Superman movie from you. Christopher McQuarrie says, I asked once, I will never ask again. Oh, it's pretty sad. So Deadpool creator Rob Liefeld jun jumps into the conversation. Uh, he says, shame on Warners. And Rob Liefeld is, uh, is a champion of a lot of... Uh, you know the, the will of the fans on Twitter which is great he is a supporter of the Snyder Cut as well um, so Christopher Quarry says back to him he says they have their own problems and I sympathize deeply but after 25 years of hearing no even an idiot like me gets the message I go where I'm valued 
Ah, this is really sad. So let's see that last of the exchange. Someone says, I think they're scared of the fans. Superman is a character that really, no matter how well you tell your story, it's going to be fail because the Donner fans will never allow anything but what their ideal Superman is to succeed. The fans can't get past the aw shucks. Christopher McQuarrie says, no, Superman is potentially great character, though admittedly a challenging one. The studio continues to try and define him by who he fights, not who he is. Meanwhile, Superman's greatest adversary has always been himself. Be true to that character and you'll be delivered. Wow, some powerful comments there, which kind of uh, highlight Christopher McQuarrie's mentality and how he would approach the superhero movie. I do think this guy right here does have a point to some extent to say um, the Donner fans will never let go of uh, will never let go of their version of Superman, their ideal Superman. And I, to some extent, I do agree. Um, but this is just an anecdotal experience. You know, I, I am a personal trainer outside of here as well. I have some clients who, uh, when I got their thoughts on, uh, you know, the Superman, Batman v Superman movie. Um, and they were admittedly um, older clients. They completely hated it. It was not the Superman they knew, knew uh, or know, and um, they they just couldn't let that up. And even though I, I tried to explain everything to them and, and explain uh, Zack Snyder's approach to things, they still wouldn't have it. And uh, that's just anecdotal, but that goes for a lot of fans, and I've seen it a lot online as well, even through people who follow this channel. You know, we've argued through people in the comment section, and, the, and that's always a losing battle. So, uh, but it was interesting, though, that Chris McQuarrie has his own approach here. It says, um, you know, especially the, 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 the comment about the studio is always trying to define him by who he fights, not who he is. Um, and I, I'm assuming he's, I'm assuming he's, um, talking about the Batman v Superman movie. I'm guessing that's what he's alluding to. Maybe I'm wrong. If you guys have any uh, more insight into what he's referring to, please let me know in the comments because I would love to be enlightened. But uh, I do like his theory. I'm not theory. I do like his mentality and approach that he uh, has developed in terms of Superman and who the character is. So I thought this is just a shame and hopefully this will get heard by Warner Brothers and they approach Christopher McQuarrie and beg for his forgiveness and ask him to join uh, the DCEU. That would be great. Um, you know, who knows? Who knows? But I just wanted to let you guys know what Christopher McQuarrie had to say since I've been reporting so much on it. With that being said, let's move on to the last subject of today. And I know, forgive me, I'm on this We Got This Covered site. I just typed in uh, Grace Randolph, um, Black Adam rumors, and basically this was one of the first things that popped up. It did a pretty good job of summarizing Grace Randolph's video, which I did see myself. So uh, you can check her video out. She kind of breaks things down on what she've heard, what she has heard from her own sources. Uh, but here, let's go ahead and read some of this. It's pretty short, and let's go ahead and talk about it. So it says Black Adam won't just introduce Dwayne Johnson's anti-hero villain to audience for the first time, but also the Justice Society of America. And of course, there have been rumors of of this uh, movie introducing the JSA, first superhero team in comics. Uh, that would be great. I, we talked about it in a previous video. Um, skipping down here, it says, Behind the trailers, Grace Randolph has claimed that Black Adam is now casting, uh, revealing the full list of JSA heroes who will appear opposite of Conduct Ruler in the film. First of all, as per every report, Hawkman will be co-lead character with Adam, with Warner Bros. looking to cast an actor in their 30s for the part of Carter Hall. The female lead, meanwhile, will allegedly be Isis, which is unsurprising considering Isis and Adam's romance in the comics. The supporting cast will then include Adam Smasher, played by an actor in their 20s, Stargirl, actress in her 20s, definitely not uh, Breck Bass... Bassinger from the Stargirl TV series, Dr. Fate actor in his 30s, and Hawkgirl actress in her 20s. Kendra Saunders is likely to have the smallest role of all the JSA, and what's more, Randolph shares that Jay Garrick's Flash and Alan Scott's Green Lantern are also being considered for inclusion in Black Adam. So, very interesting stuff here, and of course, file this under the rumor category for right now, but I do think it's some interesting things to speculate and talk about until we get some solid news on the issue. So, first of all, you know, it looks like we are going to get uh, Hawkman versus Black Adam. 
um again i i need to brush up on some of the, some jsa reading and some and some black adam comics uh because i'm only most familiar with him in uh the recent short jeff jeff johns um, new 52 uh version of, of shazam as well as the ongoing series right now and i'm not caught up on the latest issue of shazam but uh, I do need to read some Black Adam comics. I know there's a lot of stories that I'm missing out on. So if you guys are some Black Adam fans, let me know what I should read in the comments below. Uh, but uh, Hawkman, yep. Uh, I do know that Grace Randolph was saying that Hawkgirl was probably going to have the smallest role uh, in the movie, which is pretty curious given how she is a very popular character and is notably part of the Justice League as well. So that would be weird. Um, they're going to have a Stargirl in the movie, and they, of course, are making a Stargirl TV series already, so it's going to be something different. Um, but uh, the real new news that, uh, or not news, the new rumors that we heard is that um, Jay Garrick, Alan Scott, is going to be in here. And of course, if the JSA is going to be in the movie, these two characters, of course, are going to be in the movie. Uh, but there are different iterations of the JSA, of course. But uh, of course, Jay Garrick, Alan Scott, those are two heavy hitters. Of the JSA and I think uh, this would be really incredible it'll be a great way to introduce a Green Lantern now I'm not currently f really following the Arrowverse you, you know outside of the big crossovers and I haven't seen the latest one uh, I have heard that John Diggle is actually going to be a Green Lantern um, so if we get a Green Lantern in the TV show and we get a Green Lantern on the big screen in 2021 and then we have a Green Lantern TV series on HBO Max. It's like, whoa, is, are these all things going to converge at some point? We know they converged already with the, T the Arrowverse. So it's not to say that this can't happen again. Uh, we have heard rumors that Green Lantern, uh, the TV show on HBO Max, is going to somehow spin off into a movie. We'll see if that happens. But really interesting here that we might get the original Green Lantern and Alan Scott here in this movie, as well as Jay Garrick's Flash. That would be that would be incredible you know I would love to see uh, how they spin this and how they interconnect these movies now it does seem like they're still trying to do the interconnectivity for the DCEU even though Batman seems to be uh, outside of the uh, main continuity at least it appears to be from right now who knows what will happen when we actually see the movie and of course they do have their black label type movies in, in Joker so uh, really interesting. I would love to see Jay Garrick interact with the Ezra Miller Flash and a Grant Gustin Flash, bring Grant Gustin into the movie. That would be incredible. Um, so this movie is really shaping up, and I, I'm really curious to see what you guys think about these rumors. Now, again, nothing solid here, but just something to think about. And this movie is coming out in 2021, guys, so it's supposed to be filming pretty soon. I think July of this year is what it says somewhere. Um, but let's take a look at the other movies that are coming out in 2021. And this this 2021 year is going to be stacked. We got first thing that pops up to me, Mortal Kombat. <sighs> Cannot wait for that movie. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, them do another movie. It's been a long time. It shouldn't have taken this long, but I'm excited for that. Uh, we, what do we got? Tomb Raider 2. Um, what else we got that is of interest of this channel? Doctor Strange, of course. I, I am excited for Multiverse of Madness. John Wick 4, sick. Matrix 4, that's crazy. Keanu Reeves is going to have two movies on the same day over here release, and uh, there are his big franchises. Of course, we got uh, Jurassic World. Yep. Uh, the Batman, June 25th. Oh, yeah. Uh, what else we got? Space Jam 2, Spider-Man Homecoming 3 in July, Mission Impossible 7. I think that's also Christopher McQuarrie. So, Suicide Squad, and man, we got a lot of movies. What else? So, what are they competing with in December? Okay, in November, we got Fantastic Beasts, Thor Love and Thunder in November. But in December, Black Adam's going up against Sherlock Holmes 3, Wicked, and Hotel Transylvania 4. I think it has a solid shot of doing some big money here. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, th Holmes 3, I think it's been a while since that last movie came out. So um, I'm not sure a lot of people are demanding that movie. I wasn't a big fan of uh, the, the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movies. Wicked is a popular play, of course. But yeah, Black Adam has a good chance of doing real good. So let's hope they uh, make that there was other news that this movie is going to be more of a traditional movie versus the joker uh of course and that's something that i think we all expected we didn't expect this movie to be a uh a super political commentary on society or anything like that but uh yeah i'm excited let me know what you guys think about uh this rumor i'm really curious uh let me know in the comments below 
that's all the time I got for today, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you're notified for all our videos. And go Niners. Have a good one. Peace.